So for the next couple of weeks, our sermons will be about something that we talk about a lot. and Well, something that we don't talk about as much, but we've all probably had done to us, interestingly enough. We're going to be talking about the sacraments. Now, every week we come and have communion, and I'm guessing that most of us have been baptized, but how many of us since confirmation have really thought about what the sacraments are all about? I mean, you talk about it when you're in confirmation, and then you just kind of celebrate them, and that's it. Um, so why do we have sacraments? For that matter, what is a sacrament? And I was thinking about it, I'm like, if we're going to talk about sacraments, that's where we ought to start. What is a sacrament, and why do we have two of them? So... It turns out that the question, what is a sacrament, is actually very hard to answer because everyone has a different answer to that question. Now, as Lutherans, we define a sacrament as a right which, uh, or sacraments are rights which have the command of God and to which the promise of grace has been added. So, God said to do something. And there's a promise attached to it. If those two things happen, it's a sacrament. This is why we have two. Uh, Jesus says at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there's the command. And then we read in Romans that baptism does good things for us. In, In baptism, we are buried with Christ and raised to new life again. And it carries that promise. So there's baptism out of the way. Holy Communion. What happens in Holy Communion? Well, first, Jesus said, do this. So there's the command. And second, through communion, we receive the forgiveness of our sins, and most importantly, we physically receive Jesus. So there you go. Promise, command. Confession almost made it in. It's kind of interesting. Luther really liked confession. If you read about Luther, you'll find out how much he liked confession. He liked confession so much that his confessor told him, stop confessing me all these little sins and go out and do something major so you actually have something to confess. Because that's just kind of how Luther rolled. He really liked confession. So, but the trouble with confession is Luther said it didn't have quite enough of an outward sign. So it didn't quite make the cut. Because we are commanded to confess And the promise attached to confession is the forgiveness of our sins, but because it lacked water or bread and wine, it didn't make the cut. Now here's where things get complicated, because while we define sacraments that way, other Christians define sacraments in similar and yet different ways. For instance, the Roman Catholics define a sacrament as efficacious signs of grace instituted by Christ and entrusted to the church by which divine life is dispensed to us. The visible rites by which the sacraments are celebrated signify and make present the graces proper to each sacrament. So it's a little bit different. Now because it's a little bit different, they end up with seven sacraments. They have baptism, confirmation, holy communion, confession, anointing the sick, ordination, and marriage. Anglicans define a sacrament as visible signs of invisible grace. And it also requires a proper form in liturgical action and some kind of matter to which the sacrament is attached. This leads to two plus five sacraments for the Anglicans and the Episcopals. There's the big sacraments, which are communion and baptism, but then there's sacraments that are called sacraments, but they're not really properly sacraments, which... It's like it's a thing that's a thing, but it's not really the thing. And those are the other five. Presbyterians define sacraments similarly to Lutherans. And then there's the denominations that say that there aren't really anything that are sacraments, and they call the same things by different names, and they're still equally important. They just don't call them sacraments. There's a couple that add foot washing as a sacrament because they read in the Gospel of John that Jesus said to do this, and it carries the promise, so they go with it. Doesn't quite work under the Lutheran definition, but it works under their definition. It just gets complicated. And the most complicated of all are our friends in the East, the Eastern Orthodox, who we don't talk about very much because, you know, 
most of us come from the Western church background, if, you know, being that most of us were either raised Lutheran or Methodist or Episcopal or Presbyterian or Baptist or whatever. Um, but the Eastern Orthodox view sacraments completely different from everyone else because they don't really view them so much as sacraments as mysteries. Now, they call them mysteries because it's the means by which God reaches out to allow people to draw closer to him, but they don't really understand how God does that, so they just call them a mystery. And because they call them mysteries, they, they kind of have seven, but they kind of have everything. Because under that definition, everything is a mystery. Everything is a way by which God can draw people to himself. Now, I kind of like that view personally because I look at it and people I have encountered have come to know God in some pretty interesting ways. Uh, my favorite example is a woman who I met in the Ukraine who, growing up in, communist, in the communist Soviet Union, she could not read the Bible. And reading the Bible was discouraged. But she could read Dostoevsky because Dostoevsky was a Russian and they were all about Russian pride. And do you know how she came to know Jesus? By reading Dostoevsky. Go figure. All I got when I read Dostoevsky was confused. But that's a way that God called that person to himself. And I like that view. Because the thing that ties all of these, sacra these sacraments together and all of these definitions that we have and all the things that we call sacraments is God doing something extraordinary with something ordinary. There's nothing inherently special about a bowl full of water. But when we use it and God uses it in baptism, it's something special. There's nothing special about bread and wine but when God uses it in Holy Communion, it becomes something special. There's nothing special about Dostoevsky, aside from him being a great author, and don't get me wrong about that. But when God uses it to bring someone to know him, it's extraordinary. These small bits of things that we encounter every day become something more because of what God is doing. And through these sacraments, through these ways that God meets us, we experience anew the victory of Christ over sin, death, and the devil. And it takes those things and flips them around. Because when Jesus defeated sin, it means that we are forgiven. When Jesus defeated death, it means that we have life. When Jesus defeats the devil, it means that we are saved. And it's because of that that I'm kind of drawn to these, this orthodox view of everything is a mystery. Everything in, that we encounter in our day can be used to bring us closer to God. Because while I see good reason to hold up baptism and Holy Communion as special, we can't forget that there's so many more ways to experience God than just the things that we do in this building. In these next couple of weeks, we're going to look at that, focusing on baptism and Holy Communion, and saying, what do these things mean for us here? But then also, what do they mean for us when we go out? What are ways that we can see God working in more places than just the building that we're used to seeing God in. Because while these sacraments are good and obvious ways to see God, it's also good for us to keep in mind the less obvious ways. To keep our eye out for things that God is doing. There's a really cool thing that they do at VBS. And they call them God sightings. It's a really simple, straightforward thing. And they ask the kids at the beginning of every day, how did you see God yesterday? What did God do for you yesterday? It's an important thing, I think, for us to even remember that. 
for us to go about our day and, and as we end each day, think back and what did God do for me today? How did I see God as I go out? What mystery did God use to bring me closer to himself? Because when we do that, when we keep our eyes open for the work of God, you will be amazed at what you will start to see. You will be amazed at what things you see God working in. And then we can turn to God in praise and say, thank you, God, for that. Thank you, God, for that mystery that you showed yourself to me today. We can use these things that we encounter in our daily lives to deepen our faith, make us more like Christ every day, and to experience over and over again Christ's victory that brings us forgiveness, life, and salvation.